Under attack, Kenya fights cyber hackers. That's the headline in the standard this morning. And the editors decided to give it the dramatic effect of putting it in black. Dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Dun. Okay, at a glance, a group calling itself Anonymous Sudan claims responsibility. ICT Cabinet Secretary Elio Dowalo confirms that attack but says no data was stolen. Telecom giant Safaricom confesses to having challenges. Interior Ministry confirms momentary disruption caused by attempted cyber attack. National Cyber Security Committee had warned of targeted attacks on critical infrastructure. E-Citizen, the platform through which citizens access government services, most affected with most of the services on E-Citizen actually unavailable. What does that mean? We're joined by a data scientist, Kennedy Wangari. Kennedy works at the United Nations Environment Program, but he's here in his own capacity as a data expert. Good morning, Kennedy. Uh, good morning to you. Welcome to Kenya's Biggest Conversation. Uh, thank you so much and uh, grateful to be here, to be hosted uh, by you. That's uh, a hot uh, seat of the situation, bro. Yes. Uh -huh. So are you a hacker? Um... I'm an ethical hacker, <laughs> I would say so. Yeah. Uh, and uh, considering that uh, I work with data, so right. have to be conversant to understand uh, how I collect data, how I process data, and how I deal with sensitive data and comply with the rules and regulations that are there. Mm. So I would say yes, partly. Um, I'm a data professional, yes, uh, in my day-to-day -day work. Uh, and uh, as a hacker, I upskill myself because uh, with the evolving trends, there's need for data professionals to be aware of how they work with data and all that goes about. Mm. Yes, all right. Karibu sana. Let me welcome you with the day's proverb. CT would have given you the proverb, but CT is away today. Um, he will be joining us hopefully next week. The proverbs for this week are from the country of Lesotho. Lesotho, written Lesotho. So, today's proverb is, Cows lick each other because they know each other. Well, Cows lick each other because they know each other. What do you think? What's your interpretation of it? Uh, cows lick each other because um, uh, they know or uh, they're familiar with each other. Mm. Uh, what I would say is that uh, my own interpretation and understanding is that uh, uh, people who are, are closely associated or who share similar interests are aware of um, uh, the, the associations and what brings them together. Uh, and uh, I within the context of uh, today's discussion, uh, I would say um, all the different uh, uh, stakeholders that are involved within uh, the data ecosystem, within uh, basically the ICT ecosystem, are fully aware of these pressing issues. Because uh, if you look at uh, uh, from a government perspective, uh, there's the push towards digitalization. Uh, mm. And uh, this being a multi-stakeholder uh, conversation that brings together different uh, uh, parties together from government, private sector, technology firms, uh, they're all aware of the goals and the vision like for a country we want to achieve uh, the v vision 2030. Uh, we've, uh, we also have the SDGs. So we are aware of the goals and the objectives that we want to achieve uh, and uh, we sort of are working towards, uh, well, contributing different efforts but mm. towards the same goal. So uh, I would look at it from that context that, uh, well, uh, we all uh, cows, we understand uh, where we headed to, or we understand our patterns, and uh, we are working towards that. Mm -hmm. So that's my own lemons. Uh. What do you think of that interpretation? I think if CT were here, he would have given you 10 million points. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good interpretation. It is. It's your perspective of it. Yes. Now introduce us to data scientists. What, are, what do data scientists do? Uh, we're in a data-driven economy where yes. we're generating data in almost every field. Yeah. Uh, in every second uh, and uh, basically uh, we've heard of uh, artificial intelligence, uh, these emerging technologies, uh, data science, machine learning and all these buzzwords. Uh, th all, all these are basically technologies and uh, are ways that uh, we're looking at how as organizations we can leverage the large volumes of data like if it's within the media station like at Spice for all the sessions that we've been having looking at how can we be able to derive insights from the data that can help us power data-driven decision-making processes maybe in the future we're able to unlock opportunities uh, we're able to support our businesses so it's more of uh, bringing together people technology uh, and data that we've generated to s help us be able to see further and to be able to unlock opportunities and support our businesses uh, in data-driven decision-making processes mm. yes so because you're dealing with data then you must also think of the security of that data yes right and so securing that data is part of your 
job as well isn't it absolutely or is it somebody else so you just collect the data you're analyzing the data but then somebody else is standing guard uh, like i did mention as uh, the start of our conversation is that uh, as data professionals people who are dealing with data at any point whether it's collection uh, whether it's processing whether it's utilization uh, there's need for us to understand uh, all the nuances in terms of uh, how do we deal with this data in terms of uh, what are the uh, regulations that are there how do we comply because uh, again there are a lot of conversations around how we deal with sensitive data mm. uh, both from a local perspective all the way to international levels so uh, you find that uh, as data professionals anyone who is working with data at any level yeah. uh, there's need for us to understand uh, uh, how do we comply with the rules and regulations that are there how do we also uh, protect this sensitive uh, be it corporate data uh, how do we also ensure that our systems are properly functioning so uh, all these are conversations all these are gaps that uh, we seek out to mm. gain skills and expertise uh, so that uh, we can be able to conform with the rules and also don't find yourself on the wrong side mm. okay the current buzzword cyber attack yes what does that mean uh in layman's term I would, uh, mention, uh, would define uh, cyber attack as a malicious threat or activity that's uh, uh, sent to either a computer application uh, with uh, with uh, either two intentions one uh, to steal uh, or to basically to uh, gain unauthorized access to your systems to steal confidential data or to cripple your systems Uh, or to uh, basically out uh, there has been i would say that is the main uh, motive when it comes to these all these malicious activities you're trying to basically penetrate and access someone's system uh, with the main motive of uh, stealing their confidential data and maybe if you have other socio political uh, reasons uh, then uh, you uh, your motives are uh, you able now to execute that but mainly it's all about uh, unauthorized access mm-hmm. to your system mm-hmm. uh, access the data uh maybe for financial uh, reasons or uh, maybe uh, for other purposes okay. like in the case of uh, uh, anonymous sudan and uh, all that they've been doing with the different countries and all that yeah. mm-hmm. okay so in order for us to understand the severity of an attack a cyber attack i mean everybody in kenya yesterday was on tenter hooks because of what was going on but before we into get, get into the details of that yes. help us understand It's very clear in my mind that if you were living in a four walled, you know, house there's a perimeter fence, there is a gate, there's even a guard at the gate, isn't yes. it? And we can see that. They say there's primary level of protection has then been provided. You might have an electric fence and these other things, right? And that's a physical protection that you can see from somebody an intruder then accessing the compound or whatever, right? Yes. Now, in this cyberspace explain to us what security then looks like that prohibits an intruder from coming in and doing these things that you've spoken about what does that so we can understand what does that space look like so that when we hear that there was an attack we understand okay exactly how somebody got in what did they do mm. oh, great uh, when we talk of uh, cyber security uh, there are four key things that uh, we look into uh, as much as uh, the landscape is quite evolving and uh, new trends and developments one is can we be able to identify these threats can we be able to identify uh, any uh, suspicious intrusion to our systems uh, so uh, we're basically looking at can we be able to put together strategies to ensure that uh, no unauthorized access uh, it could be maybe implementation of passwords or role based mechanisms and uh, other uh, cyber security measures to ensure that only the authorized people have access mm-hmm. uh, so that's one way to b- uh, putting together uh, strategies to ensure that we can be able to identify a- any intrusion any uh, uns- suspicious intrusion mm-hmm. second being uh, uh, being able to put together um, strategies that can help us to mitigate in the event that we've been able to identify that you know what uh, there was an attempted attack or uh, on our social media pages maybe on our uh, our databases uh, can we be able to mitigate so this is where now we're able to uh, design our uh, strategies that could help us now to mitigate this is where you find that organizations will be able like if you're dealing with communication we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to install and implement email uh, content filtering systems we'll have maybe uh, examples of maybe firewalls within our networks like let's say maybe within uh, the KTN home and Spice home network uh, we 
able to install firewalls. Um, would go on and on and on on the different ways that would help us in terms of how do we mitigate. Would probably also bring in an anti-malware software to help us detect. Uh, so all these are basically strategies to help us uh, being able to mitigate in real time. Uh, this particular uh, suspicious activity that we've been mm. able to identify uh, and also uh, that being uh, implementing or putting in place uh, strategies that can help us once we've been able to identify this particular threat mm -hmm. or this suspicious activity we've been able to uh, put together uh, strategies and ways that can help us uh, mitigate uh, the different um, cyber threats because uh, there are quite a number of them mm. uh, and even more and more that are evolving uh, with, uh, we, with, within the space. Uh, how can we also be able to, in the event that uh, we have, uh, let's say, uh, a massive data breach, right. can we be able to recover in real time? Like in our case, as you've put it across, there was anxiety and worry uh, from Monday that our systems have been down from, uh, let's say, two weeks ago, Keb system were down. Uh, maybe like someone who's, let's say, maybe you've been a user of the Keb system and then a few days uh, later, you're uh, undergoing the same. Uh, uh, unpleasant experiences uh, with uh, the e-citizen platform. Mm. So uh, amidst all those uh, worries and anxieties, do we have in place strategies that can help us in real time once we have uh, cases of a massive data breach or uh, the, uh, the, the intrusion? Mm -hmm. Can we be able in real time to recover and have our system properly functioning? Because like uh, there was uh, like yesterday, the CS assured us that uh, the systems are back, uh, and uh, we are probably from today they'll be running. Mm. Uh, do we have uh, strategies in place that can help us in real time? We can be able to uh, have in our system running. In case we this is all we can do to recover as yes. soon as possible, as yes. quickly as possible. Yes. Okay. Now, with all those things that you've said, and just going with the example that Ndu gave, mm -hmm. how do thugs get into our home? So we have put up, we've put up the perimeter wall, we've put the electric fence, we've put those glass bottles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've done all. The, we've put, we've installed CCTV, we've put uh, burglar-proof windows and doors and all those things. And then a thug enters. How do we say it was either an inside job, somebody from the inside opened for that for them? Or they scaled the wall, they put a ladder at the wall and they used something, they, they disconnected electricity, they knew how to disconnect the electric fence, they got in. When a hacker gets in, what route do they use? Are you able to actually trace? Mm. This was the weak point and this is how they came in. And how do they identify those weak points? A great, uh, that's a great question. Uh, one thing is that uh, you realize is that uh, the cyber security and threats landscape is quite evolving. If you look at uh, uh, the 2022 report from uh, Communication Authority of Kenya, there's also the Pan-African uh, Cyber Security Report 2022. And I think there's the Serianu report also in, uh, around the same uh, 2022 report, all around uh, the current landscape within Africa on matter cyber security. You realize that um, there w there's been those, there's the evolution of how the hackers uh, have been able to uh, access our systems. But uh, along the years uh, there's the evolution the new trends that are coming up in that one way would be uh, there's uh, the inside job like a good case example I would uh, like to use is uh, the 2019 you know there have been reports uh, mm. alleged reports that uh, if you walk down the memory lane in our country on how uh, our systems have been hacked up mm. to the conversation that we're having today in 2019 uh, there were reports that uh, the Chinese government was spying on Kenya mm. uh, and uh, they, they were able to steal large volumes of data around uh, Kenya's uh, debts ceiling to China and repayment strategies mm. and how that came about was because uh, one of the government employees like as you did put it across and uh, this being an internal uh, a government employee um, maybe lack because of lack of knowledge uh, uh, they, they were able to download some infected uh, uh, documents online and uh, that's how uh, the, uh, the hackers the hackers you. were able to have access and mm. uh, infiltrate their systems uh, so uh, that gives you a uh, one example of the traditional ways that uh, uh, these hackers have been able to leverage on uh, be it uh, the vulnerabilities on the systems be it maybe like the phishing attacks like we did give an example of uh, the different types of attacks like where you could fake a communication or an email and then someone clicks a link and are they able you able to steal uh, the the information uh, so there are those examples of the different uh, traditional uh, ways that hackers have been leveraging on to have access uh, either using in uh, internal people from uh, within mm. uh, or uh, being able to use uh, more sophisticated ways like now uh, if you go by the report you're able to see like in Kenya that um, um, <coughs> uh, like uh, one of the reports that's uh, the CAK report you uh, they've indicated the number of 
the different kind of attacks uh, or the majority being a uh, malware attacks mm. you'll find that uh, most of the people are now being able to have the systems or their accounts being hacked through email and phishing eh? mm. uh, but also again you'll find uh, the evolving trends that are making it more sophisticated to one being able to identify in real time uh, is there an attack to our systems to being able to how can we mitigate this particular challenge in real time and also at the same time mm. how can we be able to recover our systems and ensure that we did not lose our data and we didn't have any other negative implications what are so, the characteristics of an attack how would you be able to look at it and say again i'm going to go back to this house and the perimeter wall if i see that the gate has been broken or the padlock has been chopped off yes. or i see that part of the fence has been cut it will be evident to me that somebody has tried to get in another way apart from the door where they're allowed if somebody has let them in yes. how would we know what would be the effects of an attack that we can now say all right there's something going on here as opposed to something else it's not some, just a system it's not downtime. just a system glitch or something mm, how would yes. you know that it was a cyber attack a uh, great uh, with the developing trends and uh, the new ways that uh, the hackers are evolving in uh, coming up with in terms to be able to access our systems uh, mm. it's becoming uh, challenging in two ways one the organizations that have not put in place uh, robust uh, systems to help them be resilient so they're not even able to understand mm. are we even hacked mm -hmm. and the others who have been able to uh, put in place systems that they can be able to detect that well uh, we aware of our normal operations but seemingly uh, we sort of have been hacked mm. but uh, they don't have that visibility to be able to move from there or the technical muscles to be able to defend themselves or to recover from there so um, uh, when we look at um, how do we get to ourselves to a level we can be able to even tell that uh, our systems have been hacked or we've been hacked one is uh, you'd find that uh, there's the denial of service, like the case example of what Anonymous Sudan is doing to different countries, including Kenya, like in the last few days. Mm. In that one is uh, whereby uh, um, <coughs> your system uh, will be sent multiple requests that will jam uh, the server. So that means that uh, you, the normal operation of your application will sort of not be able to be re to respond to requests. Break okay. that down nice, like now practically. Mm. What does that mean? What does that denial of service mean and how is it done? multiple applications great what does that uh, mean uh, thank thank you i i think i'll use the uh, the case example of uh, the um, of e -citizen. e citizen platform yes uh -huh. uh, that supports over i think uh, five thousand uh, government uh, services yeah. uh, and uh, the system has been designed in a way that um multiple or uh, unlimited number of users uh, can be able uh, within uh, Kenya can be able to access different services at the same time at the same time at the same time okay uh, but uh, what happens uh, with a hacker is that um there's a particular uh, specific bandwidth traffic bandwidth that this particular e-citizen platform can be able to support at a certain time okay so it's not unlimited as much as it's uh unlimited to us we cannot be able to specifically tell mm. so um, you can use many people can access yes but there's only a certain number there's a specific there's bandwidth a, of traffic yeah. that they can be able to access at a, a certain time okay so uh, what happens is that uh, this particular hacker will be able to send multiples of requests to the file server that supports this application okay. and all that means is that uh, the application will not be will be rendered ineffective it will not be able to uh, attend to any services maybe if you wanted to access uh, ntsa or kra or whichever other services you will you will not be able to access the services why and that will it? be why can't it if you are arriving at the door and all of you are coming to the door the system should be able to tell you bang any line mm. i'll serve you one at a time or so are you at, saying what that, is this yeah. that makes it get overwhelmed uh, it's uh, the code or uh, the application program that has uh, been sent by that's sent by the hackers mm. to disorient or to change the normal operations of the system su such that in a way uh, the system will not be functioning the normal way. Uh, another way is that uh, so th that's a quick clear indication that mm. you'll be able to tell well this is not how our application hangs or operates day to day in that you cannot you'll not be able to uh, uh, take up any activity or any operations with the application mm. another way is where you uh, purely locked out of uh, access of the systems in that uh, uh, your passwords have been stolen let's say maybe if it's through phishing attack you've been able to share your passwords mm -hmm. uh, and you're locked out of your system that means uh, automatically you come to access your systems or the database normally and then you realize you don't have access or everything has been changed mm -hmm. so that's also another clear indication that you know what uh, there's someone else uh, who has now taken over control mm -hmm. of uh, your access in the case of 
this one, the denial of service. Yes. Let's say you were working at eCitizen. How would you be able to tell? Now you, mm. as Kennedy, how would, and a data expert, how would you be able to tell we are under attack? What is it that you would know? I mean, sitting in the back end of the system. Um, as I did mention, there's, uh, let's say for, in this case, there's a particular threshold of uh, the maximum bandwidth that we've set, mm -hmm. uh, the number of users that uh, we can process at any particular time. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, what uh, the distributed denial of service attack does is that it affects your whole network operations in that you will not be able to, uh, from an end user, uh, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll, they'll still have access to the system, but they cannot be able to undertake any operations. But uh, uh, from... Uh, a developer from a backend, yeah. uh, there's the log of applications or uh, the log that gives you a report of uh, this is how your application is performing mm. and that's why uh, there's need as we move along in the systems that we have to ensure we have these uh, mechanisms that one helps to be able in real time you're able to monitor mm. uh, and get the logs of uh, this is how your uh, application yeah. is performing and uh, so that in real time you're able to detect and tell. Would well. you see something? Let me give you an example. I remember yes. when we were growing up and um, we had gone to church one Sunday and then we came back thieves had come into our home and what made I walked in first and why we knew there was something wrong is that my dad's briefcase was on the dresser and it shouldn't have been there so we knew that there was something wrong and then as we entered into the house we saw that everything was in disarray yes. as a developer as a back-end super spy expert what would you see that would tell you, okay, guys, this is not just somebody who is playing around the periphery. This is somebody who has entered into the system and has gotten something. What would you see? What kind of abnormal activity would be present for us to know? You know, I'm asking this question and insisting on it. It's because yesterday there were many... Uh, People, somebody said, ah, no, it's just, it's okay. There's just nothing. The just, yeah, uh, just the system downtime. The down system downtime down or there's mm. glitch. But others are unequivocally stating that it is an attack. Yes. That's what I'm asking. What are the characteristics that you would say for sure? Apart from anybody can say we've hacked Kenya. Anybody can say that. Mm. But why would you be able to enter into the system and say, absolutely, this is what we have Oh, great. Um, I'll build up on that from uh, the statement, uh, the reassurance statement from the CS mm -hmm. that uh, besides our systems uh, uh, being accessed, that uh, no data was compromised. Uh? Mm -hmm. uh, one challenge that we have is you can, uh, as a developer or a cybersecurity professional, you can implement um, the defensive capabilities that in this case will help you in real time to have the system logs whereby you're able to monitor and quickly you'll be able to tell that well our system uh, has changed from the normal functioning eh? mm. but uh stopping at that um raises a lot of concerns and worries mm. And uh, that's one of the conversations with people uh, for us across Kenya that, mm. well, maybe it was it was just a denial of service uh, and um, nothing much was done to the system. Okay. But one challenge that we have is that uh, we can't be able to tell how much was accessed. Did they really tamper with the data? Because if you look at the e-citizen platform, it reroutes to different government websites. Yeah. And the history that we've had with Kenya, like from 2019, government systems are being spied on and data being stolen all the way to this year, all the data breach conversations like mm. if you look at the first quote uh, the mm. first half of 2023 mm. up to last week but one with cab system being hacked yeah. uh, what we can say is that well the assist uh, their capability uh, their, their strategies that you can put in place mm -hmm. uh, from a technical point to even also training um, uh, bringing in uh, uh, technical capacity and human resources that would help you to move the second layer because well uh, currently uh, what the information that we have uh, and also from the government is that our systems are hacked. Okay. Uh, our system were accessed through and we could not access our, uh, our government services. Mm. But beyond that, how safe are we? How sure are we that um, the data uh, that and all the, let, let's say, like take the example of the people who were queuing in maybe for visa uh, services and all that. Uh, how, sh how safe are we that our systems were not tampered with and more so the data being stolen? That's, and, and that's what else? the question. Yes. Yeah. Ndu had asked. So what is it that the guys at eCitizen or the guys at any of these other platforms would have seen to make them aware, to alert them yes. that we are under attack? Mm. And then what should they do immediately? Great. Uh, so what happens, oh, when I did mention that uh, one of uh, the key strategies is uh, putting together uh, 
different technologies or different ways that uh, in real time your system will be able to want to monitor mm. uh, and uh, be able to give you a system log of reports uh, in terms of how you normal functioning of your system based on uh, how you've set the other parameters and performance and mm. such uh. so uh, what will give you an indication that our system is under uh, a, a distributed uh, denial of service attack is that uh, from your normal uh, from your reports you'll get a spike of request it could be if you've ever seen like how a bot operates mm. like in terms of uh, let's say like a telegram bot in terms of uh, if you were to build a bot to send let's say maybe uh, five million uh, text in a second yeah uh, so uh, you'll be able to like uh, be able to see a spike uh, of uh, reports in your system or in your dashboard or whatever visualization metric that I uh, use to uh, check the performance of your system so in mm. quickly in real time if you have uh, the defense uh, those systems in place you'll be able to tell that well you this is how our system was operating at 1 a.m. and mm. then all of a sudden from 2 a.m. there are a lot of unsuspicious uh, requests or mm -hmm. spikes yeah. or uh, from a certain area mm. uh, or maybe uh, just any um, uh, not common or any familiar unusual, unusual behavior that's okay. uh, 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 that's just a rise in demand of requests because as we uh, we described uh, in layman's term mm. uh, the distributed denial of service basically it's uh, jamming your network uh, system mm. uh, with uh, multiple requests than the uh, the bandwidth that it's been set can be able to process uh, at a certain time period uh, so uh, once you have your systems in place and uh, it gives you that indication it means that one mm. you've been able to uh, overcome the first hurdle you remember we talked over the four steps of uh, cyber security one being mm. able to identify a threat yeah. it could be in real time or it could be in batch in whatever way but yeah. one you've been able to identify that you know uh, there's something unusual that's happening mm -hmm. with our systems yeah. so our uh, next two would be as a uh, as uh, the developer or the cyber security personnel mm. is to one to uh, uh, try and move to the next level of understanding uh, where is this particular threat emanating from what kind of a uh, threat what kind of uh, services are being affected mm. uh, and how can we be able now to take up mitigation strategies from there uh, and uh, also to and that builds up now the whole conversation also on how can we be able to bring our systems back to normal functioning and right. uh, that's the worry that we have with Kenya because well mm. our CS assured us that well uh, in a few hours or days uh, probably by today we'll have e citizen platform mm. up and running yeah. but there's the concern well for the last 24 hours I've not been able to access the system uh, it's actually four days. Since four days. The, eh? the entire week since yes. Monday, and if you people have been having challenges accessing the e-citizen platform. So if the people, the techies who are manning the platform have seen the spike, okay? And like you said, this is a distributed denial of service attack. Yes. So they have not taken over the system. They have not taken over your password. They have not denied you access to your own system. If you we, still have if, access. If you have capabilities, mm. uh, I think, and, and it's also something that's in the report that our CS shared, I think, later in the evening was mm. scanty in terms of, besides uh, our, the awareness that our systems uh, uh, were rendered ineffective, mm. how secure and safe is, um, is the data, the data right. considering that it routes to all, almost all the government services. But in such an instance... And we have that visibility. And what kind of report do we have from the government? In such an instance, yes. uh, the managers of the system still able to access the system or does a denial of service also lock out the managers of the system from the system um one um as we didn't mention one we've been able to overcome the first hurdle we've identified do we under threat mm -hmm. the second thing is do we have capabilities do we have systems in place i would assume we do well for government, mm. uh, government systems that we have talented uh, cyber security professional people and a system in place that will help us now mitigate the second step. That is, uh, we've identified this is the threat. We've identified the levels of intrusion and uh, what has been affected and how can we be able to block and recover from this. But if you look at what has been shared by our government, we are not aware. Did we get, uh, was our data stolen? Mm -hmm. What are the implications of uh, the people who hacked this system because from the reports that we have out there it's anonymous Sudan and they're doing this because uh, uh, they said from their report that any country that uh, attacks Southern Sudan we attack you back in cyber security attacks and uh, Kenya has been in the last few uh, days uh, I think Southern Sudan uh, rejected Sudan, itself. Uh, Sudan, Sudan sorry yeah. yes Sudan rejected Kenya's offer to have our president as the lead negotiator Aside in the Sudan yes. conflict so uh, we don't really understand and uh, the report yesterday was that we were doing this 
this for fun. So we don't know the next, if we have capabilities, we can be bold now, probably even the government gives a report that's quite detailed mm. in terms of, yes, our systems were hacked. Okay. It was a deni uh, distributed denial of service attack. Uh, these were the, uh, this is what, uh, these are the government services that were hacked. Uh, rather than just give us a general statement that, you know what, uh, no data was compromised. Yeah. Mm. Because uh, we're not even aware of, infrastructure wise have we invested in a way that we have end to end visibility uh, and also uh, being able to mitigate and take up the lessons from there so there's a lot that uh, we cannot be able to tell from um, the government side and yeah. also more so in terms of the security of our systems and even moving forward so then because there is no end to end total visibility and comprehension of what happened yesterday then it's difficult to diagnose one what happened and then to prescribe what should happen but let's now because then obviously what we're doing here what everybody's doing here is operating on assumption yes that you know somebody tried to get in the gate or somebody tried to you know cut the fence and then they got in and they did one two three right yes. but even if we are operating on assumption what would be the likely next action because you see people are coming we also heard that the national Cybersecurity committee had talked of targeted attacks, so maybe this was they were seeing this activity, right? Yes. The DDoS kind of was already you could already smell the aroma, something was happening. Yeah. So they were aware, right? Yes. What should have happened at that point? You're aware that there's you know extra activity. Yes. What should have happened to protect the borders, as it were? Yes. And now that you know that they actually did do something, there's a potential that they could do more. What should be done in a normal, ordinary situation in terms of protection? Uh, great. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, and, uh, well, I'll, if you look at our country, we've made great strides uh, towards um, accelerating digital uh, economy and uh, tapping into ICT. And uh, these were all issues around uh, cybersecurity coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, from if we go back from 2019, China coming in to spy on our government, uh, going all the way to multinationals, uh, likes of Safaricom, KRA, to the better part of this year, most of the organizations having their field day with uh, the data uh, being stolen or uh, undergoing cyber attacks. Uh, we've had the journey, and uh, I think uh, this builds the conversation on today's in terms of how do we strengthen and build resilience on our uh, or, or cyber security systems, uh, more so if it's uh, the public digital infrastructure in the government and also uh, within uh, our organizations. And you can uh, we can say is that when you look at the legal provisions that are there, we've made a great we've made great strides. From 2018, we have the Computer Misuse and Cyber Crime Act 2018 that formed the blueprint for what we have now, the National Cyber Security Committee. Uh, there are a lot of provisions that we have there. Uh, that has been able to grow over the years to now 2019 where we have uh, the, of, uh, the Office of the Data Protection Commission all about conversation around how can we be able from a legal perspective regulate how we collect data, how we store and process our data. Uh, but my key concern has always been the implementation of the legal frameworks that we have. Currently we even have a, a very promising uh, second uh, uh, national strategy on cyber security agenda that quite outlines the different ways that government parastatos uh, should be able to be uh, should be able to focus on four areas of uh, the digital master plan mm. that is on capacity building investing on our young talent uh, from uh, research and development but some of these things are not being implemented that's what you'd find like let's say uh, the national uh, um, cyber security committee will issue its advisories that you know what is uh, this is uh, uh, these are the targeted attacks mm. there's need for government institutions and businesses uh, to put uh, in uh, to implement in place uh, uh, defensive uh, capabilities and ways that they can be able to mitigate uh, but uh, do they do that uh, well that's left we, we, we can already tell from the results what's that committee and who does it comprise of um that's uh, the national cyber security task force committee mm. I'm not aware of the members, but uh, uh, that's uh, the, uh, uh, the full details. But uh, they've been in operation because uh, that's the team behind uh, the, you know, last year we implemented the Digital National Master Planner mm -hmm. 2022 that formed the basis of uh, uh, the uh, second national uh, strategy on cybersecurity where uh, the committee uh, draws its roles and functions. But when it comes to the implementation, I think uh, that's a big challenge. So what's its function? Is it an advisory function or is it an executive function? Um, like when they notice that there is a likelihood of a threat of yes. cyber attacks and then they start sending out the warnings to the various agencies, 
do they have the mandate to actually come in and say we want to audit your system to see whether your systems are safe or is their role only left to that you guys please be careful be careful you could mm -hmm. be attacked yeah it's the committee that's uh, tasked to take care of uh, uh, the four pillars of the digital master plan that's one uh, is on uh, the capacity building mm. uh, that's if you look at all the government institutions do we have uh, uh, the right uh, the, the, the cyber security people and the IT people trained uh, on uh, aware of the cyber th uh, threats uh, the government employees how they can be able to operate and do their activities in a more secure and safe way uh, so that's one uh, of the operations uh, that they do that's capacity building and training and awareness programs that are being done by the different programs and initiatives that's one of their main tasks the second being uh, uh, promotion of uh, research uh, uh, on emerging technologies and cyber security and informing uh, the government and uh, the other parastatals and uh, they've been doing quite a great job in terms of uh, also coming up with policies and I think that's where also the CS also uh, did uh, make his statement that uh, uh, the task force will also advise further on mm -hmm. the lessons that we've learned and how we can build up from there mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the key concern has also been about uh, bringing in uh, another thing uh, another task has been on talent development if you look at most of the government ICT offices you not uh, one thing I, I I've been I've been privileged to interact with some of the talented uh, and uh, quite skilled cybersecurity professionals in Kenya, mm. but uh, they're not given opportunities within the government to come and uh, leverage on their skills and uh, be able to even, even innovate more better ways for to make our digital space more secure. Mm. So if you're able to through this committee to ensure that we're able to bring these talented people rather than having someone who did a computer packages because he knows so and so <laughs> and uh, he was brought to take care of the whole ICT department. Ako, ako ID. Mm. <laughs> I would say, uh, if you look at the whole outline of the roles of uh, this particular committee, they're well outlined, but on the implementation part, I think we'll continue issuing advisories. Uh, we'll continue uh, 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 issuing uh, promises. Yeah. <laughs> you know, someone who did computer packages. <laughs> uh, so, if you look at what, uh, coming back into this one, yes. look at what's happened in this past week, all yes. right? Monday into Tuesday into Wednesday into Thursday, everything now appearing to have hit its peak. And then Friday, we don't know what's going to happen today. It's been a kind of a, a build up with clear messages that are coming from people who are claiming to be behind it. Of course, they are anonymous, even if they could, any any anonymous person can claim I'm the anonymous <laughs> person <laughs> who's <laughs> behind this thing. But the fact that there was a warning just before this thing started from this same same group, and then you started uh, noticing these activities, the system getting uh, jammed on Monday, yeah, yeah. you could maybe attribute to this same people who had warned. Okay. Now look at the response from government. The um, system has been down for all those days. Yes. There's the what you called the lack of detail yes. in the statement that's come from the ministry in charge of ICT. Just saying there was an attempted attack. Mm -hmm. It was unsuccessful. They did not, uh, our data has not it's been not breached, yes. has not been compromised. But there was an attack. Do you get the confidence that actually we have people who are well aware of how to handle a cyber attack? Oh, that's a tough question. Uh, and uh, I would say uh, out here, we have some of the best uh, skilled and uh, talented professionals. Mm. Um, and I think um, the national committee uh, or uh, basically the team that has been tasked under the uh, national, the second cyber security uh, strategy document is not really living up to its uh, mandate uh, on the four pillars. That's one in terms of uh, uh, capacity building because we have some of the best people out here. Mm. Um, and even, uh, but when it comes to bringing them on board to innovate uh, and uh, build systems that will make uh, us to be more resilient, mm -hmm. uh, I think that's quite a challenge. And I think that's why I alluded and used that example because um, even other countries have had, uh, have probably also. Uh, uh, faced similar challenges because these are global issue, but how they've been able to uh, take up the lessons out of the challenges they've had and how they've been able to mitigate and uh, put in place mechanisms to handle similar cases in the future uh, seems to be a bit different from what we're doing in the country. And I think that's where the gaps all around, more so even from how the government is handling this matter. I think there's need to 
uh, ensure that there's more involvement of our people. And uh, I hope this conversation uh, sees that we'll have uh, more cybersecurity people being involved uh, in those proposals, in those discussions. Uh, all these conversations will be, uh, because, you know, uh, for many years we've had... Um, ICT just being generalized as ICT, mm. uh, but uh, you know, as we having conversation around digitalization uh, and everything, uh, cybersecurity remains a key issue uh, to everyone who is dealing with data. Mm. And uh, from uh, the government, um, I think there's more to be done. Uh, we have some promising documents uh, that would help us achieve the Vision 2030. But how do we move out of the challenges we've had? Mm. We had the 2019 cases. We've had a good share of. Uh, uh, private institutions having their own share of challenges. We've now had um, this menace that we're going through. How do we move forward as a country? In terms of severity, looking at the events of yesterday, if it was on a scale, how severe was the incident um, of yesterday in language of um, cyber and data? Are we talking about heart attack or are we talking about a cut on the finger, essentially? Um... In my own thoughts and opinions, I think um, it was um, a hard attack. Mm -hmm. uh, as much as uh, well, uh, uh, we don't have access, so we can be able to uh, share an out a detailed outline of uh, this is uh, the system that was hacked. This is uh, particular uh, operations that were rendered ineffective, or maybe there were any cases of uh, data breaches. Uh, because again, also even from the government, uh, leak to no scanty information on the same. Mm. Uh, but if you look at the weight of even the uh, group behind uh, the attacks, if you mm. look at their previous attacks, if mm -hmm. you look at th that Sudan group, mm. uh, they've previously attacked uh, US, mm -hmm. Sweden, Australia, mm -hmm. uh, amongst other countries, more so within. And if you look at the areas they're affecting, uh, in all those different countries, uh, it's around education, it's around fintech uh, and uh, healthcare and more so government critical services. Uh -huh. So we can't really be able to ascertain exactly um, the um, severity, depth, of, the severity what? of uh, the impact of uh, whether we lost uh, large volumes of data. Mm. Uh, besides now what we can be able to tell that, well, our systems were rendered ineffective for a few hours. Uh, there's so much that we need to dig deep and take up lessons and uh, look at how do we build more resilient systems moving forward. Okay. What would you, I'm sorry, I have to come back to this uh, quickly. What would you have expected now that was done yesterday in terms of first mitigation, frontline mitigation to stop something? Else? What would you have expected would have been done? The gate is cut. Do we fix the fence? Do we remove it, put another fence? You know, what would have been done yesterday in terms of protection? Or what um, continues to be done right now? The immediate uh, response, uh, in my own thoughts, would have been too fast. Uh, bring a close uh, operation, uh, close down on the operations of the system, so that uh, now the technical team, uh, because you know, at the same time, people were uh, there were the worries that you know you can't be able to access ECTs, and everyone else is also trying to access the same mm. system. Uh, the system is also uh, undergoing th uh, through the threats, uh, and uh, I would have been to want to. Uh, bring the operations of the system to a close so that uh, the team is able to conduct a thorough system audit mm. and give an, a detailed uh, report that uh, well uh, this is um, uh, the level of attack and uh, this is the next steps that we're going to take from there because I di as we did mention the different layers of one identifying uh, a particular threat mm. being able to uh, implement uh, various risk uh, mitigation strategies to that particular threat mm -hmm. and also being able to uh, put in place or enforce mechanisms, how do we be able to recover in real time and get our operations up and running? Okay. Kennedy, we thank you very much for joining us today and for all the insights that you've shared with us. Uh, Kennedy Wangari is a data scientist. He currently works at UNEP in Nairobi. This is The Situation Room, the only way to start your day.